How we doing everyone? MJS, owner and founder of Find Tech here with you again today. Uh, probably gonna be a long video, uh, so buckle up. What we're gonna do here is, I'm gonna just give a little bit of backstory and some, uh, some set some expectations for this video. What we're gonna do is, I have a page on my website called Website Care Plans. Now, I think that this looks fantastic, personally. I'm a little biased, but I think this looks fantastic. Now, we'll get into more of the context of what this is and all that sort of stuff in a second, but the one of the main objectives here, the reason I wanted to start on this page is because this is the topic of the video from a business and technical standpoint, and this is what you would have at the end of this if you decide to watch all the way through and uh, go through everything that we're gonna talk about here. Um, so I have a couple notes to make before we can fully dive into this. So let's go there, but just so you know exactly where we're at, that's that's what we're kind of shooting for. Now, a couple things. First thing, the video is gonna be long, there's no doubt about it, the normal videos are long. This one's like kind of technical in nature and a lot of things to cover, and I'm just gonna be talking a lot about this because I'm passionate about this topic specifically because it's a very important one in our industry as web designers and agency owners. So it's gonna be long. There's gonna be timestamps, every one of my videos, but, but, but also this one obviously, uh, in the little, uh, timeline bar there. Most, I expect the beginning of this video to be heavy on like, I'm gonna cover why we did this and then why you may or may not want to do this. So, uh, you know, if you don't care and like you're set on this and you're looking up for a cool way to do it, like, you know, make a cool, um, uh, you know, like a table like that and everything like, you know, everything uh, regarding that, then just skip ahead. Uh, I think you should listen to the business case because I'm gonna tell you some mistakes that I think I've made and maybe you end up not even wanting to do this and you skip the whole technical part, but I'm just gonna give you a lot because that's what we do here. So that's gonna be the first part. Bottom line, use the timestamps. If you wanna skip around, it would be helpful. Um, I'm gonna explain, like I said, why or why not you might wanna do this, get you thinking a little bit based off of the service uh, offering that we have now because this is kind of like an anti uh, antiquated system. Truthfully, this never even really saw like entirely the light of day, but there are many, many, many agencies using this type of model. So um, don't just copy me, like, you know, go with what you feel. I'm going to give you everything that I can think of in this video revolving around this care plan uh, topic. And then ultimately what I am going to do though, is because I want to make sure that if I ever want to come back to this, because this is probably going to get deleted off the website here pretty soon because we are pivoting. Um, I want to make sure that I remember how to do it really for my own personal sake and also for you guys because I think that it is a really cool thing. <clears throat> also, I'm going to add one more note here while we're talking about this. You may need one more piece of software, which I think that one you can get away with being for free. Um, the tools that we use, if you uh, know from in the description, there's a full list of everything that we use. Um, probably mentioned in other videos as well. We use Elementor Pro. We use Jet Engine from Crocoblock. Uh, and then in this video, you might also need the uh, dynamic visibility plugin, which is the free version of dynamic OOO. Um, so, you know, consider that as you move forward here, but we're definitely gonna need Jet Engine for the table piece of it. That's how we built it. There may be other ways. This way was pretty, pretty easy um, and really a good future proofing way or like a good way to manage. I'll explain as we kind of go through it and everything. The last thing I wanna say is that there's a lot of people on YouTube in this space that do four hour tutorials, like literally like figuring out how to do everything and like a step by step. I would love to do that. However, I don't normally do these projects in one false swoop. So if I ever have the opportunity to do that, I will do that. But this is gonna be more like of a recounting of how we did it. I'm gonna go through the pieces and everything, but don't expect this to be, because I know some people get mad when we do this. Don't expect this to be like, me physically building this thing again, because I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you all of the templates, all of the pieces and everything, and uh, kind of show you exactly how to do it. And if you have a knowledge of, if you have a knowledge of Gen Engine Elementor, you should have no problem when I just kind of show you the keys to it and you put it all together. Um, if that's not enough, I apologize. Uh, there's a link in the description if you wanna have a one hour call with me and have like consultation and you know we can handle all that. Um, or if you just have any questions, I mean, throw them in the, in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to help. And there's, uh, you know, we're building a great community here. So, uh, yeah. So just to set expectations there. All right. So this is going to be the beginning of it. I think that's kind of all the notes. Here's what I want to talk about first. And I'll probably ramble on this, like I said. <laughs> but the first thing I want to talk about is why or why, why or why not you 
might want to do a th specifically a three tiered or a tiered approach to your what I would call the support package. A little bit of context, as, as you guys might know, obviously, if you're in this space, or if you're just starting out, maybe you don't really fully understand this concept. Generally, web designers and agencies, let's just keep it as WordPress web designers, we know, and we have to educate the client on what this actually looks like. It's like you develop the website, which takes time, money, energy, perhaps, whatever, and there's normally a fixed fee for that. So let's say you're building a, a 10 page website and you're charging $5,000, right? So you're gonna build 10 pages, you're gonna charge them $5,000. There's more on that. We could talk about that in a different video, how you should structure that. That's not the point of this, but that's one part of the, the business, right? The second part of the business, and some choose to do it, some choose to not do it, but we're talking about the actual part here, so we're gonna assume you're gonna do it. You're gonna establish a relationship with your clients and you're gonna have ongoing support with, for them, which means a litany of things that we will scroll down and see here in a second. But that means that when you have this discussion with somebody and they come to you and say, hey, I need a website, you need to have the conversation saying, okay, I can build that for you, but I also need to support it because having a website is not free. You need to at least have hosting. There's many, many other things that you should have, especially if you're on WordPress. Um, so you know that's a conversation to have. And as you grow in your business, you're probably gonna realize, well, I can make this offering stronger and maybe I can get more money out of my clients because the relationship's stronger, the value proposition is better, things like that. Now, for me, where I'm at in our business with Find a Tech, this was something that I've heard so many people do, I've seen so many people do, and I'm gonna tell you why I don't like it, but I am gonna tell you that I'm probably in the minority in that case because it really does work for a lot of people and I just couldn't really get it, it just didn't sit well with me. So this right here is, the beginning was my notes, and this is like the, the document that I created just as a, a doc in our, in our archive of when I was doing this. So for full transparency, I believe I made this, um, let's see here if I can see details. So I created it on August 22nd, 2022, and today is uh, May 11th, 2023. So what that means is that over the last months, like I, I think I probably finished, I don't know when I like completed this or whatever, but I did it back then, right? And I was like thinking, okay, I need these three tiers and I need to have like a pricing structure that makes sense. And I've listened to a lot of different people talk about this three tiered pricing structure because it does work in a lot of in a lot of instances, especially if you see like SaaS products, they'll have like, you know, a bottom tier, middle tier and a high tier. And the middle tier is really where they're trying to sell you at because that's the one that like fits for most or is most popular or whatever, right? So I was like, we need to create a three tier to simplify, simplify this process because I was just going into these things blind and I was saying like, oh, how much to, to, how much to manage it? And I was just kind of like selling that as a random number, right? So literally still on retainer, I have people at $30, $50, $100, uh, 200, 300, and that's not really a good way to go. I would not recommend that. I'm working my way out of that situation. I would recommend charging somebody a fixed rate for development, charging them a fixed rate for ongoing support and knowing what that is. So I'm telling you all this business stuff because I want you to be better than I was at, at this point because I feel like this is one way to go, but you have to understand the whole thing and be able to articulate the value proposition and make it make sense for you on a, on a numbers uh, base, right? So I said, you know, we need the three tier, we need it, and then ex it set the expectation that this is probably gonna increase yearly, you know, for your clients just so they're not like, they don't think that it's gonna be this forever. So at that point, you have to figure out like what that value proposition is and how much it's gonna cost and everything. So we continue to move down. I've seen many people, um, specifically, I'll, I'll, I'll mention them, uh, Jonathan Stark, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, watches his stuff all the time. I've seen a lot of his, uh, a lot of his stuff. Some of it resonates with me. Heard something about three tier pricing. I heard the pricing should go one, one X, 2.2 X and five X. And that's how I got like roughly these numbers here. Um, and I don't, you know, again, I don't, I don't even think that's exact. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But my point is that like, that's another thing to consider. So if you're going to have the three tier pricing, the idea is regardless if you hit that, those numbers exactly, it's a low tier where it's like bare minimum, like anybody would potentially get it. But like, if you're thinking about something, right? Like, let's say you go to an ice cream shop, like small, medium, large, and I don't know how the pricing normally works there, but the, the idea is like small is normally too small, big is normally too much, medium is kind of just right. 
That's the idea. That's why most of the stuff is always like most popular is the middle one. And it's like, if I'm gonna spend 250, the idea is to get a lot of value in that middle one almost, and then get them to buy that because that's, and, and there's, there's a concept of price anchoring, right? So like the big one is like a lot of money. It's like stuff maybe they don't necessarily need, but the middle one is like, looks like much better deal because it's closer to the first one, but it still has a lot of value. That's kind of the, the concept in a nutshell. So the point being there is if you're gonna do something like this, consider how you wanna price it. Don't just be like 100, 200, 300, cause that's not even gonna work, right? So that's something that you should you should really um, you know think about in a way, right? And then there's some other things like who's gonna manage the content stuff. And I kind of cover that in the other video. I'll put a card somewhere about um, the uh, this now our service offering, how to build a service offering as an agency, because that's something that I think uh, is is important and it shows how my my mindset has actually changed, like I said. So this is my point, is given that information, right? If you wanna go with a three-tiered approach, you can, but you have to approach it from that mindset. And you really have to like, it gets a lot deeper, and the reason I feel like it gets a lot deeper is because it's a lot harder to sell certain things that we'll talk about here because you're giving them options and they already don't know what you're doing. I'll explain more about that, but like that's been my experience. Maybe I have not educated my clients well enough. That is totally a possibility. Uh, maybe I'm not dealing with the right clients for what I'm trying to do, always a possibility as well. But my point being is as you move through this cycle, you're probably gonna try to deal with like a more of a certain client, whether that's an industry into a niche specifically or into a, uh, a niche of like type of website. And I don't mean, I don't mean like maybe you could multiple different like industries, but like the same type, maybe it's like group membership or, or something of that nature. Uh, but my point is you'll figure that out along the way, but with this support engagement specifically, it should be tight from a business standpoint in this, in this agency or, you know, sphere, your recurring revenue needs to be top of mind. The reason it needs to be top of mind is because you don't know, I mean, you should know, you know, what's in the pipeline, what's coming next, but your recurring revenue is like guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. You should, it shouldn't be guaranteed. I mean, you should always do better for your clients every single month so they continue to use you. But my point is that if they sign a month to month contract with you and you're doing a good job, unless something happens, you're, you're getting that money. As long as you're putting up your, your end of your deal, uh, you're, you're holding up your end of the deal, then, you know, they should be paying you, right? We can talk more about that. But my point is that the recurring revenue is important. So you need to have a good model here, at least something that works for you. And there's not one, one right way, but that is why um, a lot of people go with this three tiered approach, which is not the end. It's not bad. It, it can definitely work. Um, and so I think the best thing to do now would kind of be to go through this and then I'll share, I'll share what I think works and what I think is very difficult as we look at this and and what I would advise you to do is never ever take my word specifically for everything. Always, always, always look at every piece of information out there that you can get. There is so many other web developers uh, on YouTube and not just on YouTube, but like just type in um, like website care plan on Google and you'll see like 40 other pages of people that have done this, like actually implement this in their business. Um, if they don't have YouTube channels or whatever, maybe they don't, you know, have, uh, you know, the that maybe they won't be sharing the results of it per se, but you can always like reach out to them too. My point is like, I'm just giving you one perspective. Do not just take this as gospel. Like go, you know, do your own research on other people that are doing this. But my point in saying that is I'm gonna show you the list that I came up with here and the breakdown that I came up with. And I actually implemented this, like we're gonna see, we'll get to the technical part. And this is what, I would consider when I did this and the reason that I ultimately kind of slightly moved away from the three tier thing. Okay, so we're assuming three tiers. We're assuming a like a small, medium, large, and we're assuming that you're trying to price anchor. So you're kind of trying to hit the middle, right? So there's a lot of things going on and I don't know if this is where you're at in your business. Maybe I'm giving you things that like are super, uh, super uh, amateur hour for you. Maybe I'm giving you things that you haven't thought of and you have no idea when you're gonna think of them because they're too far ahead. I don't know, just, you know, again, take this all with a grain of salt. So the idea with these care plans, every one of them would be month to month, cancel at any time, would be what I would say to do. Reason being is because I don't ever wanna sign a long-term contract with somebody like a year or whatever, because I don't feel like that is 
anything could happen. Their business could 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 fluctuate. Uh, they might just cancel. I don't want to be. I, I don't think that websites are a situation where we need to have a long-term relationship. We need to have a fixed period of time where I build the website, and then we need to go month to month, maybe with like a, a month out like cancellation, some sort of cancellation notice. Again, that's a, that's a topic topic slightly for a different video when we would get into like some terms here because there are agreements that go along with this stuff. But I would say as a general rule of thumb, like month to month, like that's how you pitch this. This is a month to month contract. You can cancel at any time. We ask for notice or whatever, but like you're getting these services on a month to month basis and you're paying this X amount of money. So when you figure out like, and again, this is kind of your last step, the pricing, but like understand that that is where you're trying to do. You're trying to shove a lot of good value into that middle tier because that's the one you really want to sell because they're going to see a big number. They're going to be like, oh, that's a lot, but that one looks like a really good deal comparatively. So the first thing, and again, this is all WordPress based, okay? So what do we know about WordPress website hosting? What do these care plans out there? And this was, this was I did the exact same thing I told you to do. I went to a bunch of website care plan pages and I searched and searched and searched and I kind of like culminated everything. It's like, I want that top tier. I want it to be the best tier that I can think of and I can create because that is what I want to compare everything to. And it's like, if you want the best, this is how much it costs. If you want a really good value, this is how much the middle one costs. If you want the absolute minimum to do business with us, that's what the bottom one's gonna cost. That's actually my mentality. So with WordPress, you absolutely need web hosting, right? I am a huge proponent of cloud hosting. I left GoDaddy shared hosting in the dust about six months into my career, or I don't even know what, it, you know, like, like into my career of, of doing this because it was the worst experience in the world. I would never wanna do it again. I was recommended rocket.net shared hosting. I think that that is like a way better option. I would look into it. I haven't actually deployed anything on that, so I can't really speak to it, but it but I did test it out and it seemed way better. They have way more things like implemented in there. It's a it's it's still affordable, but it's it's a different type. Uh, you know, GoDaddy is the is the punching bag obviously of the of the industry, but it, it's just, it rocket.net blows it out of the water. It has like Cloudflare Enterprise integrated in it, so you're getting cash and you're getting optimization things. I don't, I don't feel like it's the right thing for me still. I still have a problem with shared hosting in any form, but I would say if you're considering it, if you're considering doing shared hosting, please don't do like $5 you know, a year shared hosting from like GoDaddy or something. Put your clients on something better than that. That would be my recommendation. So I think maybe the best way to do this would be to just go straight down rather than like kind of across just to kind of give you all of the different like um, things that were in the plans. And then we can talk about it kind of from a left to right perspective. So um, so WordPress website hosting obviously need that. An SSL certificate, they need that. Uptime monitoring is a really cool feature to have. So you know when the website goes down and you can report that to them. Hopefully it doesn't go down and you can say, hey, your website's up like all the time, which is great. SMT and contact form delivery um, monitoring. So you need some sort of SMTP. I would not recommend we're, we're um, relying on WordPress's uh, mail delivery thing, whatever the hell they have like implemented in there, just the the, the function or whatever that, that sends that stuff. Everybody normally has SendGrid or I think Mandrill. Um, there's a bunch of other ones that I can't think of. Uh, look up SMTP and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, just make sure the emails get delivered from the contact forms, that's huge, and like anything else that happens. Uh, malware and spam protection. Google reCAPTCHA, at least, right? Um, you know, uh, for, for the forms and everything, there's some other ones. There's 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 security plugins, which is kind of related to that, kind of handle some of those types of things. Uh, there's also clean talk. I'm just giving you random examples here. Um, we're not going, I don't want to go like super deep into kind of exactly what we're providing there. Um, be, just because I talked about that in the other service video. So I'm kind of giving you like just random examples of, of things that I'm remembering because I didn't have it at this stage. Um, agency licenses. You have to say this. Like you, you, you. This is a huge value proposition that you. I guarantee so many people are not are not leveraging. If you pay for the 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 agency license of Elementor or Jet Engine or whatever, that is an investment that you made in your business that they are going to highly benefit from because of the functionality that you can provide to them. You have to tell them in some form that they are that they are. Uh, benefiting from that, right? So that's what I mean. Um, and you know what I'm gonna do here? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna slightly pivot, I believe, because and I apologize. I'm gonna pivot from this because I'm, I'll I'll you know I'll put this somewhere uh, somehow. I'll I'll put this resource somewhere if you guys want to play around with this and create your own thing. Because I had to create this from scratch. Uh, this this uh, document, this page. If you're gonna do this, if you're gonna do this, um, 
this table, it's just a table in Google Docs, but if you're gonna do this table, like if you're gonna implement this, I would highly recommend doing this table first because it helps you like, sh you know, map it out and then do it on the other side because it's a little harder to kind of like finagle. It's not like a drag and drop table or anything on the, on the front end. What I'm gonna do though here is I'm gonna just go over to this page now because we've talked about everything and it's all, it's all the same. I'm not gonna talk technical yet. I'm just gonna still talk business, but like you can kind of see this from a user perspective rather than just on a Google Doc. So, and it, and I think it was in pretty much the, the same order here. Actually, we'll, we'll start, uh, I'll just kind of go over some of these again. I, so the tool tip, we'll talk about how I did that, but that's what I mean too, is like explaining the value of everything that you're talking about. I would do this differently now, but it, but this is a great way to do this if you're gonna do this. Explain what the thing is, like say what it is, say who gets it, and say what it is. They do not understand, and I'm not being derogatory when I say this, P business owners in non-technical fields do not understand why they need these things. You have to educate them on what the thing is and why they are not getting like ripped off. Like, you know what I mean? Like why you are providing this for them, why they need it. And they wanna be, uh, they wanna fully understand and be okay with the fact that they need that. You need to expre express that to them and they wanna understand that they are not getting ripped off by something that they don't need, right? That is the whole point of, of, of educating and putting out content and things like that. So with this, uh, again, like that's what kind of the tool tips were meant to do. It's like, have you ever seen a little padlock in the URL bar and SSL certificate encrypts your data? Like you need that. Like we take care of it for you, right? Like just things like that, like small little things. This is like the bare minimum that you need to do. You cannot just say uptime monitoring and expect them to know what that is, right? So on rare occasions, websites can go offline with, with uptime monitoring. I hope you can see this. I think you can. Um, uh, we know we don't know right away and we'll be able to get it back online as quickly as possible. Send grid SMTP service. If your website has a contact form or sends an automated e-commerce uh, e emails, you will need an SMTP uh, service to ensure that your visitors get those emails. We partner with SendGrid to make this happen. Like just little shit like that, dude. Like just easy stuff, right? So we built a custom, um, so we, we were down to here roughly, right? So malware care protection, I talked about agency licenses. We have a slew of paid plugins and tools that our website care plan uh, clients benefit from. These agency level licensed tools allow us to boost the design and functionality of your website at no additional cost to you. I cannot believe, this copy is fantastic. I cannot believe I wrote this. But yeah, so like, so that's what I mean, is like things like that, you have to tell them. You have to explain it to them. And if you can explain it to them here, then hopefully they're at least somewhat warm if they come through your website and then and then talk to you, right? So they'll have somewhat of an idea, right? Educate the people so you don't have to sell them. That's that's kind of the concept. Um, so I think I reordered some of these. So find a tech uh, client portal access. We build a custom portal just for uh, our clients, one place to handle all your billing support and project management needs. Um, you know, that's, a, that's an option. Again, I have different views on that now, but we do have a custom client portal that is, that is beneficial. Um, WordPress core updates. So again, they don't understand that the, that the, the WordPress core needs updates, the theme needs updates, the plugin needs updates. They don't get it. They don't get it. And rightfully so they're not in this business. Tell them why. Okay. Tell them why, tell them how, tell them everything that, that they need to know there. Don't tell them like exactly like what, you know, you have to do or whatever. You don't need to go super technical, like crazy technical on it, but like explain why it's a value to them. Explain why they would care and just reassure them that they won't have to worry about it. Here's what we're doing, but you won't have to worry about it because we're going to take care of it. It's really all there is to it. You know, explain the value of your website is never going to be messed up. Have you ever gone to a website and seen like, you know, like, like stuff's out of order or things does, doesn't work or there's like, you know, like a, a, a box that says like, you know, um, you know, couldn't load this or whatever, yada, yada, like random stuff anywhere. Like your, your website's not gonna have that because we make sure that the stuff is updated. You know, software is always changing, stuff like that, right? So you need that. Content database backups. Um, so just like the photo, photo gallery on your phone, your website files need to be backed up in case of unseen, for, for unseen circumstances, unforeseen circumstances. We take redundant backups of your server um, on the server and offline just in case. Backups are huge. They should understand that a little bit more than they understand this other stuff, but still explain to them. It's like stuff does happen occasionally. Technical errors happen very rarely, but we have backups, so it's fine too. You know, that's that's the value there. Security checks. Um, I think some of these I didn't end up even end up doing these because I was halfway done with this when I decided to pivot, but um, security checks, again, a huge thing. Support level, uh, you can throw that in there if, if you're doing the plan thing. Development and content time, my, my 
my thought process really changes on that. Um, hourly uh, rate discount, um, Google Analytics reports, 60 minute strategy call, caching and speed optimization, detailed website care reports, performance check, development staging website, accessibility integration, Termageddon integration. You could talk about things like SEO, talk about things like heat mapping. You could add 10,000 more things to this list if you want, okay? That's the list. Those are the, those, the things in the list and, the, and, and a little bit of why you need those or, or um, you know, the value that you're providing, right, with the tool tips and everything. Okay, now what I'm going to do is maybe I should have done this while we went through, but I want to set the scene now. I wanted to give you an idea of what was on there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through this kind of, and I'm going to show you like what my thought process was for each one of them. We'll try to do it more in like a chunk fashion, right? So like hobbyist, which I'll, I'll say honestly, hobbyist was kind of like a passive aggressive thing. I really didn't want to sell any more two fifty per month things, and I didn't. And I, honest to God, do not feel like if you if you are if you if you are only doing the bare minimum on the website here, like the way that I that I wanted to do this. This was one of the reasons that I pivoted. Is if you're only willing to spend the minimum amount of money to keep your website like up to date and running, then I don't want to say I don't want to do business with you, but I feel like the way in which I build and the value that my agency provides, I just don't think we're right. We're, we're a good fit. I think there are other people that would be a better, better fit for you because I feel like the way that I want to handle projects and the way that I want to um, be in relationships with my clients, I want them to be of the same mindset as as we are at Fine Attack, which is constantly growing and like trying to get better. And I don't feel that like that. If I here's what I'm saying is if I can't express to them that the their website is important enough to invest more than that, I don't really want to work with them. And that's absolutely nothing personal. It's just that that is my thought process on websites, and. Uh, I guess I just don't need the money enough. I don't. I. I mean, I, I don't. I. I don't. Just don't value money in that way. It's like I'd rather have a better relationship with my client and somebody that's willing to. I don't want to stunt the the growth of the project because of the budget. Is kind of a way another way to think about that as well. I'm gonna have more ideas for these websites because I'm invested in these businesses in a way because they're my clients. I want to make sure that they are on the same page as me and we're on the same team and we're on the same wavelength with making the website better at a at a at a uh, a rate that is reasonable not just nothing right and i built this plan and i knew that this was kind of like you know i would say to you if you were going to do this the idea with these three plans is to not sell any of the small ones like that's the idea you don't want to sell the small ones you want to sell all medium ones at least maybe some maybe some large ones but you don't want to sell any of the small ones because if if somebody sees three options and goes for the small one I don't, I don't think that's going to bode well for you. And the other thing too is like you'll see here as we move through this is the small one is, I don't want to say it's a trap. It's a, it's a litmus test is exactly what I was just expressing there. So let's talk about it. So what do you get with the small one here? And pretty much every other small um, website care plan is you get website hosting, you get a SSL certificate, you get uptime monitoring, you get all these, all these things at the top here, real standard stuff. I mean, like it's not it's not costing the business a lot. It's not a big time suck. You really have to be careful with the time. I'm telling you, I've made this mistake too many times. You have to be careful with the amount of time that you promised people that you were going to give them because they will take every bit of it if you if you give it to them. And I'm not saying that you should feel you should feel like you shouldn't be willing to give time. You should, but you should absolutely get compensated accordingly because you're in business and that's the point of business, right? So so you have all that, right? And then um, down here is where we get a little, you know, it gets a little dicey um, because now you have to start talking about like things that you have to do or, or or you can automate a lot of this. Main WP is like what we use for the updates and everything like that. But now it's starting to get like, okay, well, we got the basic stuff. We really can't go too much further out because this isn't going to make sense financially for everyone, okay? So WordPress updates, all the updates, um, backups and security checks. I had as monthly. Do you think that I want to back up a website monthly? No, I don't. I want to back it up every single day, really, because I don't want to have any problems, okay? Like if you, imagine if you backed it up today and then tomorrow it got messed up in any sort of stretch of the imagination. Or imagine imagine you backed it up a month ago, it was a better situation, and, and, and 29 days ago and it got hacked today. You were screwed for the last 29 days. Now, hopefully the idea would be that this, and I had a note in the other thing is like, 
you cannot purchase this plan. I would, I would put some stipulations on this. You cannot purchase the minimum plan if you have a big website. It's literally for small websites. Like you, you couldn't do it based on what I have here. It'd have to be a, a brochure website, five pager, nothing crazy. You know, it doesn't need a lot of updates as far as everything. Like there's nothing great. There's nothing complex going on. There's not too many, um, conflicts that could arise. There's absolutely no user data. No way you're putting this on an e-commerce site. There's too much stuff going on. There's too much data being transferred. There's too many, um, I don't even want to get technical because I'm not super duper, I'm not a, 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 you know, a software developer, but like the database is changing too much for you to like not have backups like on a regular basis. You know what I mean? So just be careful of that, right? Do you think I want to run security checks monthly? No, I want to run them every single day. That's why, you know, this is, this, you're starting to see now why I'm pivoting, why I pivoted a little way away from this, which we'll get more into. We haven't even touched the technical stuff yet. This is going to be a long video. Okay. So, um, so yeah, and again, and then support level, emergency technical port, support, um, different ways to differentiate all that. Development time, uh, development and content time. Um, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll just jump to the next one, right? So, so, but that, that is to stop there. That's the hobbyist, right? And again, passive aggressive naming of that, honestly, because I feel like you're a hobbyist if you're in that level, which again is fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing on people for starting businesses and being at that level. But what I'm saying is that you have to understand that that version of a website is there's so much more potential there. And there's probably, again, the fit, the fit isn't right. And that's ultimately why I never wanted to sell any of those. And depending on what situation you're in, I might not want to sell any of those either. Just throw, just throwing that out there for food of thought. Consider it uh, and do what you wish. Uh, so, professional uh, for serious websites that need a feature-rich plan. This is now where we're getting into a slightly um, more serious territory, right? So, um, WordPress, uh, everything up at the top there. WordPress core updates and everything are weekly. I still don't. I mean, weekly is fine, but I still would just rather do it as as you know as soon as possible. Honestly, for the most part. Um, uh, there's there's different schools of thought on that, but like I feel like weekly is at least a good middle ground, right? Uh, content database backups at least weekly, right? Now we're probably getting into some slight e-commerce here potentially, depending on the client. So again, yeah, oh, backups are important. Security checks are important. Support level, again, just a differentiator. You realize that like if you're paying for very little, you're gonna get just emergencies. Um, you know, support more so. Uh, if you're paying for more, you're gonna get more. Uh, you know, a better response time as far as from us, right? Development content time. You got to be careful about this uh, because people will ask you month to month, what's going to, let me, let me, let me, let me actually, this is a great place to interject this. When you start to do this, okay, you, when you will find this no matter what. I and many of our other of my colleagues that have done this business model, right? This support you know, if you if you go the route of building a website and then also supporting it, you are absolutely going to run into this at some point. And I didn't mention this at the end of the last one, the end of the last hobbyist thing. Here's the real problem with hobbyist. Okay, the real problem with hobbyist is that hobbyist has still has expenses. Like the business still incurs expenses for hobbyist, right? And I'm going to relate this to how this this changes in professional. In this case. This still has expenses. Granted, it doesn't have many. You know, web posting definitely costs money. Potentially, you could get some some costs through like SendGrid or whatever else you do here. But like this, this is where it gets sketchy. The support level, um, and, and really the development time and content. How, how those both go back? Because now it's it's not just money; it's time as well. The reason, the biggest thing that I've seen happen with the hobbyist level. When you're, when you're just running that or most of your clients are on that is that it is so easy to, one of two things and both are bad for you. One, work too much for what they're paying for you, which is not good, right? That's an L. Or they don't understand, maybe at first they do, but over time they will forget and they will, they, or, or if you don't educate them enough, they're just not gonna know. They're gonna be like, they're gonna come up to you and they're gonna be like, Mark, we're paying $250 a month and we never talk to you and we don't know what we don't know what you're doing like what what are you what, like what what are we paying this money for can you explain and it's like well we have costs we have things we have systems in place that you are benefiting from right so it's a it's a conversation like that now you may you may argue 
as you know, somebody on the development side and the agency side, that $250 is too much. I don't necessarily disagree with that, but there's there's a slew of things in here that are there that's even like not necessarily direct expenses, but it's still like you had to take the time to build the thing, right? There's a lot of value. They're getting $250 worth of value. Like there's no value subjective, but they are getting that. But the problem is that is so hard to sell. Like it's so hard to sell. It's so difficult to sell to a to a non-digital uh like uh, industry professional, industry, you know, a uh, business owner, it's so hard to sell a, it, like any more than, and, and I'm, again, let me set the scene. We're in America, right? I'm in the United States. I don't even know what it is elsewhere. I mean, I, and I, I hear ridiculous things like you can't sell websites for like $50 elsewhere. I have no experience there. So I apologize. Um, but adapt this to your own thing, figure out what that number is and understand that you actually, I, there's no way that I could sell that plan for any more than 250. And even at 250, it's a hard sell. So what does that mean for me? That means that I don't want to be selling that package of services because I want to talk to my clients. I want to be engaged with them. I want to give them more ideas and I want to build more stuff. And I can't do it financially at that price. So I don't want to sell it at that price. It's hard to sell at that price. I don't want to sell that type of that type of package. So at this point, I'm like Xing out. And you, you're, again, you're starting to see the evolution. I'm Xing out the hobbyist plan because I don't want to do that. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't drive me. It doesn't fulfill me. And it's only going to cause problems because even if you were charging them $50 a month, which is like 5X less than that, like now it's like you're barely making any money. Like where's the number? You know what I mean? Like I think you could probably get away with 150 and you could probably get away with 100 and never have any issues if it's a, if it's a reasonable business. But again, it's just a real difficult process. I'm, I'm, I'll stop there because I, I don't, you know, it's kind of just like a, 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 a trial and error type thing. But I think the 250 is a really good indicator of the fact that you are not going to be able to charge any more than that for that for that amount of services, and they are eventually going to be like, why am I paying 250? If I never talk to you, I don't see any like content changes. The website doesn't change. It just stays up. People just get like that which you can't really blame them for doing that, but that is something that's, that, that, is, that is a real concern that you need to be careful of um, because that's, that's what I've seen it. I've seen it, it's happened, you know, so just be careful. So now uh, with that little interjection there, which is a really important point, let's, let's go back to professional and talk about like where you start to get interesting. So development and content time. If people don't see their website like changing, they might get slightly annoyed in a way because they don't understand that like the thing needs supported, right? So you have to balance that. There's different ways to, to kind of go about that. One of the ways is to build in some time. So let's assume that your rate, I would I would say our rate, even though I don't want to do hourly and that's a whole nother discussion, Jonathan Stark too, look him up, uh, Ditching Hourly is a podcast. Um, I don't want to go deep into the hourly conversation, but let's assume an hourly rate just because it's it's an it's an it's a cop out. It's an easy thing, okay? Let's I would say if we had one it's probably like 125 an hour and yours is probably I would say between 75 and 125. Hopefully I would I would hope that, you know, if you're in the United States at least that's that's kind of where you're you're playing ball. So, assume that that is like an hour that is definitely going to be in the plan. Like like okay, so as soon as you as soon as you add this line item, you have to up the price by at least your hourly rate, right? So that's how we go from like more of like a two twenty five to a five fifty plus some of the other things that we that we obviously do here. I actually had one fifty here at one point, you know. So, but I don't want to do hourly anyway. So, my point being that like I'm adding that in there and I'm trying to like you know make the numbers make sense you know financially there. Okay, so what what are we talking about here now? This is dangerous. This is dangerous. Okay, it's, it's dangerous. What, what this line item is supposed to represent is that if they come to you and they say they want a paragraph change or they want a new page or something like that, or this, that, and the other thing, is they get 60 minutes free, basically a month. Like they're paying for it. It's not rolling over. I would highly recommend that you don't say that you don't let it roll over and it's not refundable. It's not like you're going to get it back, right? So now this puts you in another precarious position that I really don't like as, um, you know, in essence, I, I just don't like, I don't like it. It does not sit well with me. I do not like to pay for things that I may not use. I don't like it, you know? Um, if 
they are paying 550 a month and now they feel like they have to ask you for stuff to fill that that 60 minutes that also doesn't create a good a good relationship in my mind that's why i don't like this concept of building in time not only that like 60 minutes isn't even a lot of a lot of time you know what i mean like what are they going to ask to change in 60 minutes maybe some links or like add a new like maybe you could say add a new blog post or something again super dangerous you know uh, just just be careful be cognizant you're not gonna you're not gonna understand all this just from me telling you this you're gonna have to learn it you're gonna have to go through it which is fine um but i'm trying to give you a heads up on what you should be thinking about and and the way in which um you know these things normally go so be careful there right be careful in offering time because again it's a two-way street it's like okay cool you're building that in it's not it's not rolloverable so maybe maybe you benefit from it if they don't use it but if they don't use it then they're also going to be kind of at some point they might be pissed that they're not they're paying for it and they're not getting it right Maybe not because it's not like huge numbers we're talking here, but it's a con- it's a concept to be, to be uh, considered of, right? So that's that. Hourly rate discount. I would not. I would. I would absolutely not even do this. I don't even know why I put it in there. Don't get, don't give people an hourly rate discount and like time. It's just honestly more than anything. It's just going to get confusing from an administrative perspective. I, I just I wouldn't even do that. I'm not even going to really talk about that. I, you can if you want, but I, I wouldn't do that. Google Analytics reports. I said monthly here. Um, that's a, that's a, I mean, you should, you should be reporting. Um, I don't know if I, I have detailed care, care, um, detailed website care reports. There's ways to automate, automate that in manage WP and main WP. Uh, that's like things like just showing them. That's like a big thing that I didn't get to yet. Cause it's in the next one. I'll, I'll talk about it there, but something like that. Google analytics reports. This is tough because I don't, I don't agree with this anymore. I wouldn't put it here anymore because it's, it's not, support related it's more of like a growth related thing they shouldn't even like they should know their google analytics but they it's unless you're strategizing like it's not it could be like an upsell opportunity to show them what they're doing but there's you are going to show them something that you're not working on and i don't really like that that concept like i i just don't i don't agree with i don't i don't agree with it because it doesn't make any sense like we're just we just have a website and in everything else in this plan that we're doing for you is not like boosting your analytics in any way why would we make it a point to show you them it's just a stupid thing to do um it would make more, way more sense to do the website care reports which i'll show in a second i'm gonna i'm probably gonna end up talking about this for an hour though this this 60 minute strategy call is by by far and away the most important thing on this list it is going to transform everything about your business i say that slightly hyperbolically but it it this is this is the key okay and i didn't understand this when i was doing it at this point so i hopefully you're getting some value out of this I did not understand this at all at this point. You have to have this in there. If you do not talk to your clients every month, they think you don't exist and they Im- immediately devalue you. Like it's not a personal thing. It is a it is a human nature thing. It's like if I am not talking to you, if I'm not if I'm a service prov- do I do you value the person that cuts your hair? The answer is yes because when you need your hair cut, you go there and it's probably like once a month. Like they're they're ready, they're there for you, they're physically doing something. The website game, the way that it is, is just so. It is so easy to screw yourself so fast if you stop talking to your clients. I love passive income. I love the recurring revenue. You have to talk to them. Like you you can't. And I've made this mistake, and this is why I say this is so big. You cannot just think that somebody is gonna hand you two hundred fifty dollars every month when they don't talk to you, when you haven't talked to them in the last four months, like it doesn't make any sense. Now, maybe some people will do that. I'm not saying everybody won't, but what I am saying is that the that's not relationship-based, okay? That is not, you cannot have a relationship with somebody if you do not talk to them. You can't. It, it's not, it's, it's, it's completely contradictory to a relationship-based business. I don't know why more people are, I don't know why people are doing it. Not only that, you can charge more if you talk to them. That's why it's in the bigger plan. So, you know what I mean? And you can charge for your time. And not only that, if you're talking to them every month, you can use that as a way to give them more ideas and to upsell them on new development. This is what is gonna change, I believe, the trajectory of my business as I implement the new thing that I've talked about in another video. That's the, that's the the key. I'm telling you, that's the key. 
There are too many people out there. The differentiating value prop in all of this is talking to your clients regularly because everyone else out there wants to take 50, 100, $200 from them a month without talking to them. Maybe that is what you want to do as well. I, I guess that was kind of sort of what I want to do at some point. It's not anymore. I'm not telling you how to run your business. I'm not telling you what to exactly provide your clients. I'm giving you a, 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 a template if you'd like to you know, edit it, but I'm saying that like that is the key. And I wrote yearly there. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You should have, I should actually, I'm thinking now I should have another call like yearly that's like even more involved or something. This, that needs to be monthly. I'm like, I'm done talking about it because it's it, it, it like, it's, it's, it is, when you think about that, it's mind numbingly straightforward after you think about it. It's crazy. So that is another like, like don't even, don't even, don't even, you have to consider it. You absolutely have to. So that's all I'm going to say about that one specifically. Okay. So the last one here in the professional uh, tier that we had was caching and speed optimization. Now, another video, I'll put it up there, Nitro Pack. Don't, I, I mean, it's an affiliate link. I, I get so weird when I, when I talk about this stuff because I don't want people to sound like I uh, think that I'm like shilling these products. I, if I tell you that I use something, I am not, one, I'm not lying, but two, I wouldn't recommend something that I don't like to somebody. So my point is that I made that video on Nitro Pack. There is an affiliate link. You can use it if you want, or just go to nitropack.io and buy it. It doesn't matter to me. But my point is that that is also a game changer. And I, I don't know, like, again, I had it in here. And at the time I don't, I don't, I was like thinking of what to use. And then I discovered Nitro Pack. So, but like, it's essential. It's on Find It Tech now. And it is, it has changed everything as far as the speed of the website. Like, I mean, the scores are good. The user experience is good. Like it's, it's, it's imperative. You cannot expect to build big websites. You know, forget Nitro Pack for a second. You cannot expect to build good websites or big websites or get bigger clients if the websites you build are slow. Okay. And I don't mean like, you know, like 0.2 milliseconds, like slower than, you know, whatever. Amazon isn't always fast, okay? Like it's not always like lightning quick. You don't need to be lightning quick. You need to be fast. Like I don't even know measurements of time. I, like less than three seconds or something like that. Maybe, I, I, you know what I mean? Like not, people aren't clicking and waiting on the front end. On the back end is slightly different. There's, it's, you know, it's a little tougher in a lot of ways. But on the front end, you need to be fast. That goes back to your hosting. Do not be putting multiple websites on the same server, please, for the love of God get a different business model. Okay. Like I, I don't recommend that at all. That goes back to the hosting thing, the shared hosting versus the cloud hosting. I really think you shouldn't do that, but do whatever you want. But I'm telling you the speed and caching optimization, at least compress the images. I wasn't doing that at all for the first three years. Don't do that. Okay. Compress the images at minimum. Do it, do it yourself manually, get a plugin that does it. I wouldn't recommend paying for the, for the damn plugins because then the problem is, here's the problem, is if you're using Elementor, you're using Jet Engine, like I'm gonna show you here, like the stuff gets heavy, okay? It's it's crazy functionality, like all built in PHP and built in WordPress. It's, there's, there's so much going on that you need, you don't, it's not just the images. The images are important and you need, you should have like a CDN and, and, and optimized images, but it's more so like the things that are going on in the back end that you can't control. And then you have people <clears throat> on YouTube won't name names, but like you have people on YouTube that are telling you to put in like code snippets and stuff to like not load shit. Like that is not scalable. I'm not doing that on every single website that I create. I'm going to spend a little bit of money per project. I will incur that cost, but I'm going to pass it on to them. So like, I'm not telling them, Hey, do you want to, you want your site to be faster? Maybe you should buy a jet Ent or maybe you should buy nitro pack and then we'll implement it for you. No, it needs to be fast. I know what it takes to make it fast. Don't make their lives harder. Tell them this is how much this costs and you're going to get all this value. Your site's going to be fast. This, 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 that. That's what I mean, right? So again, from the from the evolution of this, this is how I ended up going with one plan. But again, in this point, that's what I would consider uh, you know, on the professional side of things. So caching and speed optimization is important. All right, so now let's scroll back up for a second. So we have our executive plan. We have four like advanced e-commerce websites that require a great deal of attention you know, $1,400 a month, whatever you'd price it at, depending on your how your costs all break down and everything. What did we have here? So we have detailed website care reports. 
you need to do this and I have no idea why this is in the professional one. It needs to be monthly. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually take a, a step back and kind of like contradict myself slightly. If you're the person that wants to charge people and never talk to them, at least send them a care report every month, okay? If you're the person that does not wanna to talk to them, does not wanna make their website better, you just wanna build it one time and then charge them for hosting and everything, you at least need to send them a care report of what you're doing, okay? Because they so quickly are not gonna know what you're doing, it's, it, it's crazy, okay? You need to tell them at least, in that care report, you need to tell them how many plugins you've updated, like how many plugins, themes, and, and everything like you've updated. At least tell them that they've been updated. At least send them a damn email saying like, hey, we did your we did your your monthly servicing, and you know here's here's the here's the bill or whatever. Like at least tell them that. But um, Main WP and Manage WP uh, both have um, depending on which you know uh, product you have on Main WP. I think it's only in the in the pro version of that. Affiliate link in the description if you want to check it out. Um, Pro reports there, and then manage WP, which I would not recommend, but you can do it there as well. Uh, uh, care reports, and you can make them automated. Um, I think there's an additional cost in manage WP, but what it does is it says it monitors the site, like because it's in that man the web WordPress manager platform, and it says we we updated this many plugins, this many themes, this time many core things. We you know uptime monitored the site like every day or you know every whatever the interval is it's like it was up you know 99.97 time of the time we did security checks every day and they were all good uh you know we did backups and like we did we took all these backups da, 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 and you know we have all these backups of your website so you need to at least visualize somehow show them visually that you did something for them okay even if it's just a pdf report do something i'll 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 give you that and maybe if you threw that in the first plan then maybe you can get away with charging 250 a little easier but again, not really aligned with what I want to do, so I'm not going to be doing that. But that is a that is actually a big tip. Like, do that, and you will have less headaches. I, I guarantee you. Performance check. I have no idea what 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 I was thinking about there. And honestly, the problem with performance checks is if you don't have caching and speed optimization, the website's going to be slow as shit. So you're going to be like, really shooting yourself in the foot. Like I remember taking that out of the uh, out of the care reports, and not using the care reports because like I can't say I don't want them to know that the website has a D on, on page speed insights. You know what I mean? So if you don't have that first part fixed, then the performance part, you know, it doesn't matter. And I will say too, the performance check is kind of like BS slightly because like who cares like how often, how good the performance is like overall in a sense, um, you know, or on a long, long term, like you just want it to be like good, you know? So um, it, it's definitely, there, there's definitely value there, but you know, I, I, I don't know, just a random thought. Development staging website. I mean, that's really cool. Cloudways has it. Um, link in the description there. That's what we use. And um, I would say it's a good idea to have because you don't necessarily want to be doing everything, all of your editing on the live website. But honestly, they're not really going to understand what that is. So I would just not even like it's a va it's a value, but that is one that they're really not going to understand or benefit from. Um, you know, it's important, but again, I, I don't, I don't know how to exactly to, to tell you to, to explain it to them because it's just like, it's, it's more of like a, a footnote almost than a, than an actual, than an actual thing. Um, accessibility integration. Every one of my websites, I say this in that other video, every one of my websites is going to have accessibility from now on because I'm not having my clients catch a lawsuit for non ADA compliance. It's going to be built into the plan and they're ultimately going to be paying for it, uh, for the license, but it's going to be on there. And they're gonna like it because they're not gonna get sued. So that'll be on there. Uh, I would highly recommend that you look into something like that. I'm sure there's free options. Accessibility is not free, um, but they do have an agency plan. And I'll put a link in the description if you want to become a part of that as well. Um, that will be an affiliate link if I bring in more like agencies or whatever. But that's another that's another option. Um, I really like it. Super simple setup. Maybe I'll do some content on it specifically. But just look at it. Again, there's probably competitors, so look at the competitors too. Um, but again, that's compliance, like ADA compliance. I would really think about that. Termageddon integration is actually more important than the accessibility thing, to be honest. I mean, like in, in, in a lot of ways. Termageddon is a service similar to accessibility in the sense that like it, the sort of the way it integrates, I don't know, it's not necessarily. It's, it's policies though. So it's like cookie consent policies, privacy policies, disclaimers, 
terms and conditions, and it does all of that. Like you answer the questions on behalf of your client or whatever, um, or with them. You know, you go through the questionnaire and everything, and then it creates a policy, and it 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 it, it does way more than that because it's it, it, the team is great. They have like an actual like one of the, the co-founder is like a lawyer, and they're constantly monitoring all of the legal. Uh, changes with every state because this is like obviously a national worldwide thing with websites and stuff so they monitor all that and then they ask you questions throughout that questionnaire that says like oh this is um do you do this in california this business california whatever and then you answer accordingly and then it just builds it into a document and then you can embed that um you know just via like short code or whatever into wordpress right or you know script or whatever so um so my point is there, every one of the websites that I build will have that from now on because truthfully, probably like 5% of the websites that I built have policies and that's not a good way to go either. I don't, I want, your position as a web developer should be, if you wanna be a web developer, then just build a damn site. If you wanna be like a digital consultant, which is what I'm aiming for, you need to tell them things that they don't know. You need to educate them. Educate them and tell them, like at minimum, okay, what Termageddon actually require, or what they recommend is give them a piece of paper that explains to them that almost scares them into it in a way where it's like, if you don't have these, bad things can happen. Sign off on this and, and agree that you that you don't want these, okay? I don't even like that approach because I don't wanna give them that option because not that I don't wanna give people options, but I just don't even wanna have to deal with that ever. Like just pay this money and never have to worry about that. That's my own personal mindset and I'm kinda of interject, inter, injecting that into this business, but it's so nominal that if you did that, if you did that independently, it's ten dollars a month. You know what I mean? Like it's not it. Like if you're just a random person, you go to Termageddon and get it right now. It's ten dollars a month. You know, whatever, hundred dollars a year or something. It is save your ass, cover your ass. Is it, just do it. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give people options. Again, it's like I'm trying to establish a, and this is this is for this is for you as well. You have to try to establish and understand the, the types of clients that you want to work with, your ideal avatar, right? Some people work with plumbers, some people work with home service, you know, niche, some people work with lawyers or whatever, like, or, you know, whatever types of websites, industry or whatever, like, understand the types of people that you want to work with, understand from the past people who you don't want to work with, and don't go after them, don't target them, build a business model that does not serve them in a way. So you, you know, kind of just weed them out via just like, providing a better product. If somebody only wants to pay $5 for what you're doing, then don't offer a $5 product, you know, build a better product and, and charge more for it. Kind of my strategy, not saying it's right or wrong, just that's a strategy. You do with that which, with what you wish. Okay, are we done? Um, I'm gonna make a couple notes down here because it's gonna kind of wrap up this business portion. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna be able to film the whole technical piece today, but I'll put it in this video probably. If not, I'll put it in a different video. Um, but I'm, I'll, I'll make sure I let you know there when we get to that. Um, so site specific paid plugins. There's a couple things down here that you always have to say, you should say in your agreements, but you should also manage the expectation here that like certain things are not included. Like you are gonna have, let's say you have 10 clients. Every one of those clients' websites is gonna be different. They're gonna have different requirements. They're gonna have different things that they wanna do. The businesses might, you know, are probably gonna be totally different. They might need a specific plugin to do a specific functionality that, that your stack does not implement right now. I'll give you an example, e-signature, okay? Uh, client wants e-signature like in their website, like DocuSign type stuff in their website. There is actually a plugin called WP e-signature and um, it's great, I've used it before. And uh, I've only used it on one site. Like I think I'm gonna implement it on my site now, but I've only used it on one site. So what does that mean? That means that like I'm gonna have to like, somebody has to pay for that okay and it's not going to be me because i'm not investing in that to put it on a bunch of other sites because i haven't now maybe you do at some point but the point is that if you only have one person that needs it don't pay for it because it comes out of your margin you have to say that this 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 there's a lot of things this does include there are certain things that it doesn't site space site specific paid plugins is one of them right if we need a plugin specifically for your site you're paying for it it's just the, the fairest way to do everything. You have to say this somehow, some way, if you, if you agree with this, additional website development is not in here unless like sp you specifically state like the certain amount of time that it's in there for, right? That is the easiest way to get screwed in this industry is, and I've done it countless amount of times, I, I do not, I wish to God that this does not happen to you. 
do not set the expectation that just because you're in that relationship, you're gonna continue to do work for them whenever the hell they ask for it. That is not how it goes. Development is fixed rate or by project or hourly based, something like that. It is not in the support package at an indefinite quantity. That is not why you're paying $250,000, $500,000 a month unless you say it in there. You know what I mean? Like there's some people that, I don't, I don't, there's some people that have other business models, but I would not recommend that because they could ask you, hey, um, can you, uh, you know, we're paying $500 a month. Can you, can you create like a whole store for us? We're paying you $500 a month, right? Can you create like a whole store for us with like 30 products in it? And like, you know, a bunch of different like this, that, and the other thing, like try to set that expectation up front and at minimum tell them like, yeah, that's additional development. There's going to be additional budgetary, uh, you know, concerns there more than happy to do that for you, but you know, it's going to cost money. Just be upfront, be as transparent as possible. Ongoing search engine optimization. I'm going to have to end here because I'm going to get like super passionate about this. Like there are too many people out there that do SEO poorly. There's a lot that do really well. The thing is the word SEO and that the, the, the phrase search engine optimization, the acronym SEO and that whole thing has gone so crazy that you have to really be careful because people are going to think that that's like a part of it or they're going to ask you about it. And I would really recommend not doing that unless you really know how to do it or you have a partner that really knows how to do it or a subcontractor or whatever. And like that, there's so much in that. I can make a whole nother video on it. I will because it's part of our growth plan moving forward. But don't, don't just say that doesn't include it. Just say maybe if you want to say like initial technical SEO, you could say that because, you know, so you'll have like rank math on there or whatever. Like it'll, it'll build site maps or something and, you know, you can set some of that up. But actual SEO, like on page, off page, all sorts of other stuff, like making sure every single alt tag and like everything is like perfect change in title tags, meta descriptions, like everything like that is so intense. And I would recommend doing that for every website, but I like don't like on people charge. So you, so you understand if you don't understand people charge 500, 750, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, $5,000 a month for SEO. You are not doing that in this plan. Do not even think about it. Like don't don't think about it in any of these unless you adjust the prices accordingly. Don't think about it. I would I, make it an add-on, make it a separate thing. That's what we've done. We're changing up the, the game in that regard. Like don't, don't do it here, please, for the love of God. Make, make sure those expectations are understood and met and, and don't do it. Um, okay, so that took way longer than I thought it would, but I think that is really valuable com uh, content, I hope. Um, let me know if, what you think in the comments. Um, but yeah, so that is the breakdown. This is the, the page and everything. Um, to wrap it up and put a bow on this business side of it and the, the, the agency um, de you know, dev side of it in a way, consider the three tiers. Consider them. If you can make them work, and try them out. If you can make them work and you can sell that middle one, then it should work for you. But make sure that the 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 value to to cost is right, like for you and your you know your costs and your margin and everything. Make sure that that's all right based on what you're paying. You have to understand too that everything up this left side of this thing, you have to understand how much that costs you per client, and you have to factor that in to to the cost of the whole plan plus margin, right? So hopefully take those tips that I gave you and everything. Try to build out a three three tier plan or whatever. I'll put a I'll put a um, a link to the the template of that website care plan uh, document in the description so you can play around with it before you even get to this technical part if you want to play uh, around with the, the the you know the table. Um, think about it and don't. Uh, don't jump into it though. I would not recommend like jumping into this unless like you unless you have a good system here in place because you have to understand like this took me like a month probably at least to figure all this out and then I ended up being like this is not a good idea. So I don't want to turn you off to this because I just spent all this time like telling you about it and I'm going to show you how to do this 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 table. But really consider that because I want you to not make the same mistakes that I've made. Okay. And then the next thing is <clears throat> the last thing I'll say is the reason that I moved away from this, you know, with all those things in mind is just because of the fact that 
I felt it was very difficult to sell this, this low plan at this number without talking to them because this is not relationship-based in my opinion and I want to be relationship-based. This plan also does not align with what I want to do for my clients. It does not align with the fact that I want to make their websites better. It doesn't align with the idea that the website is your most important asset in a business. It doesn't align with the fact that like if you if it doesn't align with the the simple concept that a website is an investment rather than expense because anybody in that category probably thinks that it's an expense not a not an investment. So that and again there's I'm not I'm not throwing shade at those people. I'm just saying that that is that is kind of the mindset there and not everyone is your ideal client. I don't believe that the people in this I don't believe the people that are looking for this this product are my ideal client. So I am moving away from that. That is the whole reason that I built this beautiful thing and then decided to really never even advertise it in any way. So that is that is the case. I want to be more actually kind of like slightly above the professional and between like professional executive. I don't know numbers wise. I haven't actually fully figured that out yet, but my, my plan moving forward, and this is your option too to consider before you dive into this technical piece of this. One plan. That's it. One plan. And that one plan is basically going to be like all the things an executive, just as like a simple example, minus the things that I said to not do perhaps on, you know, in my opinion, but it's one plan and you build the website and then you put them on the support plan. And that's it. And I mean, you talk to them every month. You, in the idea of the support plan, the the essence of the the only one that you could get on is that your website's gonna be fully taken care of, right? So your website's gonna be fully taken care of. All the basic stuff's taken care of, and even some of the basic stuff, we're gonna do it as best as we can. Like we're gonna do it. We're gonna do daily updates, daily things like that. We're gonna. It, it's you're gonna. Your website itself is gonna is gonna be the core of it. The actual functionality is gonna be perfect. You're gonna have no issues there. You're going to be able to talk to us whenever whenever you need, right? If you have any questions, any ideas, definitely run them by us. We're probably not going to have any development time in there because we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that, you know, anything that you do extra, anything, any changes that you want to make, anything, like we actually think about them and we put together like a, a you know, like a mini project to, to add things. I, I'm still a little, I don't know exactly how to do that yet, uh, to be honest with you. I, I, I kind of want to put some time in there, but I kind of don't. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Google Analytics is, don't even worry about that right now. We're going to talk every single month. I'm kind of talking to a client here. We're going to talk every single month, every single month. And on that call, we're going to explain exactly what we did that month, detailed care website reports. We're going to say your website's going great. Um, we're going to say exactly everything that, that we've done, you know, as far as those updates and everything like that. We're going to talk to you about how your business went. You can only do this if you actually want to be more of a business digital consultant. You can't really do this if you just want to build a website. So I'm not, I'm not sure, who, you know, exactly. You gotta, you gotta ask yourself what you want to do, but this is what I want to do. And that's the reason we're on this, you know, making these videos is because I want to be more of the, the business tech guy rather than just the tech guy, if that makes sense. Um, because I know the technology and you tell me the business case that you want to achieve and the things you want to do. And I'm going to tell you how to make the technology work for you. That's the, that's the concept. So when you're on those calls, it's not just, oh, we updated this, this, and this. Do you have anything for us to change? It's more like, what did you do last month? Did you see anything? You know, how, how was it, you know, business-wise and anything? Did you hear any ideas? Did you get anything like that? Oh, maybe we had an idea for you. You know, maybe it'd be really cool to add like a section of your website that, you know, a specific form, streamline something like streamline, um, you know, uh, I don't know, careers page, you know, you know, onboarding process or something like that. I don't know right? There's a lot of things you can do. Don't get, don't give them ideas. They'll feel like there's value there. They'll be willing to pay for them. That's, that's the point of those. That's a big point of those strategy calls. That's how you upsell them. That's how you do that. So all of that. And then, um, if we keep going here, caching and speed optimization, like, you know, telling them like your, your site is going to be fast. You're not going to have any, you're not going to have people telling you, wow, your site's really slow. Like it's going to be professional. The functionality is going to work. It's going to be optimized. It's going to be fast. People love hearing optimized for mobile too, so make sure you tell them that. Even though like your website should be optimized for mobile today, um, talked about the care reports, the performance checks. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be fast, so you you can know about that. We'll check it every day for you. We'll make sure that's a it's an A. It's gonna be an A with the with Nitro Pack. Um, uh, the staging website. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you if you're worried about you know if they give you pushback on like, hey, we don't want to add this because we don't mess up the website. It's like it's all good. We can just 
build it over here completely offline. You can see it and everything like that. We just push it live in the middle of the night. Nobody, nobody knows, you know, just as an idea. Again, that's the small value out of that that they might not understand, but it's, again, it's still kind of a footnote. And then accessibility in terms of getting, sell the shit out of those. I mean, seriously, like accessibility, just tell them, like write up something or a script or something and be like, and I'm gonna be like, seriously, like you do not want to get sued by somebody for ADA compliance. Like we put it in here so you don't even have to worry about it. Like it's, it's included in the plan. People love hearing stuff's included in the plan too. Termageddon, we're going to go through it. We're going to make sure your policies are good and everything like that. I'm assuming you don't have a privacy policy from your old website. Probably not. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, cookies and everything like that. You probably heard of those types of things. You got to have policies on your website for that stuff. Just kind of a cost of doing website business nowadays. Um, it's included in the plan. We'll set it up for you. We'll, you know, answer some questions and boom, it's done. You know, maybe sometimes, you know, laws change or whatever. We have to re-up it um, as far as the policies go, but that's it. I'm telling you, I feel so strongly about this plan, um, this one plan idea, that maybe I just sold you on that. But consider the three plan idea because I do think it's a good place to start. But if you get to that level, that the, the one plan is like a is is a much interesting. It's a more in depth relationship. I feel like, and it's just something that resonates with me more. So that's that. So what I think I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna end this video and just make a part two because this video is probably an hour long. Part two will be the full technical one. If you wanna watch both, depending on how you feel after what I just said there about the three plan and the one plan thing, uh, you know, I'll have the, the full technical uh, tutorial of how we built this in that second video. Uh, if you have any questions, okay, if you have any questions about the agency stuff or the technical stuff later or anything, please, please, please leave a comment down below. Again, there's a link down there if you wanna have the consultation call as well, be more than happy to chat. Um, but again, me, somebody else in the community, I'm sure can help you with any questions. I'd love to build more of a community. I want to really do that with, with all of this. So, uh, do not be shy. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, I love chatting and maybe you have better ideas than me. I'm not the, uh, by no means is this, am I the best agency owner ever? I'm just giving you some ideas to think about. So if you even have pushback on stuff, let's hear it. Let's chat about it. I'm more than happy to. Um, but regardless though, if you get, if you did get any value out of this video, if you enjoyed me just talking for an hour about random stuff here, please click the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, look forward to that next one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.